Hi lovelies, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to make the case for fast fashion. Yep, before you hit that thumbs down button, give me, give me a few minutes. If by the end of this video, you still think, you know, you're whack, you're trash, then go ahead and hit the thumbs down, I get it. But I wanna say that there's a place for it. And I'm gonna give you three reasons why. First off, I will never deny that fast fashion is a dumpster fire. There are so many cons. First of all, many of the people that are making these garments are not making a livable wage. They may be making more what they would traditionally make in their country because many of these pieces are made overseas, but it's still not what we would consider a livable wage. Also, when they create the fabrics and a lot of the, the pieces, the fabrics that go into it are made with petrochemicals, which means more depletion of non-renewable resources. And then when it goes into the dyeing and the uh, further production process, it's consuming a ton of water and a ton of energy. So we're just, it's just a train wreck. I get it. So I'm never gonna say, oh yeah, it's fine. Go nuts. We should, all of our stuff should be fast track. Not that at all. But I do think there's a place for it. Now here's what I want you to keep in mind. When I use some of the different phrases like livable wage in fast fashion, first of all, when I say livable wage, I mean you're still on a budget, but you're making enough money in that budget to where you can afford to be healthy. You can afford to buy nutritious food. You can afford a gym membership or for exercise classes. You can afford to do something that feeds your hobby or your passions. So you've got, um, you know, a monthly membership to a local, a local theater troupe or to your favorite art museum. Something that doesn't mean when you have a livable wage, your one monthly sp splurge is in an $8 value meal. If that's, if so that's what I mean when I say a livable wage, enough to where your life can be fully expressed, okay? So that's livable wage. Two, when I say fast fashion, I mean like mass market quickly produced clothes in, in those type of retailers, okay? So let's get into it. Why do I think that there's a very viable place for it? One is budget. If you are an elder millennial like myself or just, you know, still kind of like in that early millennial stage, you're getting your career off the ground. You probably have student loan debt. You're still early in your career. You've got a job that pays you a salary, but it may not be a livable wage based on how much your rent or your mortgage costs based on um, food costs where you live, because that can vary from place to place. Again, when I say that livable wage, can you afford housing? Can you afford food? Can you afford to get your car taken care of the, the routine maintenance that goes into it? Can you afford something that allows you to exercise, not just take a walk around your neighborhood, but you know, if you want to sign up for spin classes that are less than $200 per month, can you afford to sign up for, you know, to support that local theater troupe that you love to go and see at least once or twice a month? You may not have a salary, a salary that allows you to afford that at this point. So you've not only got to, you know, pay your bills, pay to live indoors, pay for your car. You also have to buy clothes that are work appropriate that can afford this less than livable wage salary. That means you may not be able to afford 98 and $85 on a pair of jeans. $50 for an organic cotton tee top or $36 on a bralette. So a lot of these fast fashion companies offer these, you know, decent quality. Some of these pieces are really good quality. This dress, we're going to talk about it. Yes, it's very much fast fashion. Some of these pieces are good quality. They are, they're on the more budget friendly end of the spectrum but they hold up well and it's within your budget when your your budget's a little stretched a little thin but you still need some serviceable blouses ankle pants or and dresses to wear to the office 
a lot of the fast fashion places are going to be some of your better options, not only because you get more bang for your buck, but because you get things that will will not have you pulled into HR. They're still going to be office appropriate and look good and you feel good in it. Reason number two, I think fast fashion is, it certainly has its place, is because of sizing availability. Listen, if you're a size, if you're a size 18 in a size 12 world, you know that you may even, you may even work somewhere where you have the salary for that $98 pair of jeans, but they don't come in your size. Their, their size 33 is as big as it goes. Many of these fast fashion brands will expand up to a U.S. size 22, some up to a 26. They have more inclusive sizing so they can reach a greater, they can reach a greater market. Sometimes that's, those are your best options. And again, it doesn't mean that they're all crap. They may be constructed really well and hold up for, for a really long time. Unfortunately, they're just, but let's be honest. Fast fashion or not, the, the fashion industry, the way clothes are produced, especially if they're mass produced, it's just a train wreck. That's a different conversation though. But fast fashion brands, they're going to have that size inclusivity. They're going to have the some of the more specialty sizes that you may not find in some of your more favorite brands. And those fast fashion brands are going to be uh, more widely available to you. You may not have a Michael Kors store in your in your town in your area but I bet you have a Walmart I know that sounds random but you're going to be able to find that size 1822 and you can go in store and try it on and get to it a lot easier than you could Ralph Lauren plus you know so the uh, sizing availability is also uh, another big boon for fast fashion and why it certainly has its place. All right, the third reason I think fast fashion has its place is because it gives you access to those most recent trends and things that are going on in the fashion industry. Now with the fast fashion, the mass marketing pieces, they have access to um, large scale manufacturing, they have acts and because of that, it lowers the production cost. That's basic economies of scale because they can do that. They can take something they see on the runway, put it in production and have it shipped out to a store near you within nine days. So instead of you worrying about, especially if you're in, um, some of the, I don't want to say, I'll just go ahead and say it, some of the smaller markets. You know, if you live in Omaha, you may actually have some of these mass market retailers that have the same pieces that once upon a time you could really only get if you lived New York, Miami, Houston, LA, you can still have access to that. And of course that also happens with the internet, but you know, you understand what I'm saying because we've got these companies that can do such a quick turnaround and put these things into production really quickly and get it out to you just as quickly instead of saying these are the handful of pieces you kind of have to keep the rest of your life unless you are part of the moneyed elite and you live in certain areas you actually have access to some of these same the the color of the year the colors of the season that are available in different areas you're no longer stuck with just that one thing so that's why I think there is definitely a place for fast fashion in when it comes to curating your personal style and when you're getting your closet together. I think the bigger issue, there are a couple of bigger issues that I think we need to address when it comes to fast fashion. First of all, the industry as a whole is garbage. The way, you know, so much energy and water is wasted in the production of this stuff not just in fast fashion, but in, in clothing and apparel period is a problem that needs to be rectified across the board. But one thing I think the problem is, is how we view it. I don't know about you, but I've spent like some really good money on some pieces 
that were frayed or came unraveled or ripped within two months of wear. I've also got some pieces that cost me less than what I'd spend on a dinner date that I've had for six years and they're still going strong. They're not stretched out. They're not faded. They still fit me great. They're still holding up. So I still wear them. So one thing I think the problem we have with fast fashion is we see it as it's because of its cost, it's poorly made and therefore it's, it's not going to hold up. That's not always the case. The same way you can spend money on some pieces that just you know, aren't worth the salt to go in their bread, you can spend, you know, a handful of dollars and have something that's a fundamental part of your style and will hold up for years to come. And so the way we view that is a problem. The, the cost perception versus the quality perception is a problem too. This kind of dovetails off of that. We think because it's fast fashion, it's, um, it leads to a wear once syndrome. Something I always think about with this is it was an episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Will was looking for Hillary at her college and he talked to two girls that knew Hillary and the one girl described her as, you know, the girl that never wears the same thing twice. I think a lot of people view fast fashion that way because a lot of the times the clothes are so inexpensive. You think, oh, well, I can, I can put this on, wear it just for the evening, wear it just for date night just for me and the girls going out dancing, wear it just for my Instagram posts or to look cute in a TikTok or whatever, and then never touch it again. That's contributing to that cycle of, you know, the continued depletion of non-renewable resources, the waste of water and other energy resources that are going into the production of these clothes because you're buying a new fit every week. That's that's part of our perception that's the problem when it comes to these clothes. You're still spending your hard earned money on these clothes. So you still want to be intentional about it. You're bringing more stuff into your space, which is going to reduce the space you have creating, possibly creating clutter and therefore mental clutter. That's still a problem. So you still want to be intentional about what you bring into it. But if we're just seeing this as, oh yeah, this is a one and done. This is kind of a throwaway. Oh, this was only $24. Well, that's it, $24 is not, is not nothing. The, you, be, be intentional. That's part of our problem because we're seeing it as, well, I don't really need to keep up with it because it's not that big a deal. If, if it gets stained, if it gets ripped, I can even kind of be loosey goosey with this. And if it gets stained, I don't have to care. I can just ditch it. No, that's still a problem. So that's, that's more of a, our perception issue that's going into it with fast fashion. Oh, I didn't mention, I started, I forgot to talk about this dress. Yes, I bought this dress ages ago. And by ages, I mean, I was working on my first bachelor's. I've got two now and still looks good. I still get compliments every time I wear it. I still feel great when I wear it. And it's, I got it at Rue 21. I got it at Rue 21 many, many moons ago. It's still held up. It's still doing great. I don't have to baby it. I can throw it in the wash, hang it on my drying rack to dry and move out smartly. And I, if it was more than 20 bucks, it wasn't much more than that. But it's a piece that fits me, fits my body, fits my style, looks great, has held up. Fast fashion isn't always bad, especially if it's, you know, budget friendly, size inclusive. It goes with your style, it fits the trends, what have you. Lastly, I just want to say, if I haven't, if I haven't made my case, I want you to tell me why I'm wrong in the comments. I think fast fashion has its place. And by that, I mean the mass marketed pieces because you can still find some very decent quality stuff that's going to hold up. That's going to fit your personal style because you're taking the time to create the personal style that fits you and the direction you want your life and your career to go. And you're being intentional about what you bring into your closet to fulfill that vision. So 
In short, I would just say, keep it in perspective. If you buy all premium, luxury, mid-tier, mass market, whatever in that spectrum you choose, 70 to 80% of your closet, make it those foundation pieces. If it costs you $16, if it costs you $600, you still want to make sure that these are pieces that are going to work with you across the spectrum, across the board for your needs, for your professional and personal life, as well as as part of your continued journey. Then you have that remaining 20, 30 percent that you can play with for the fun colors, the new things, the more playful pieces that you can periodically incorporate that, you know, if you wear it maybe five or six times, you're still getting your money's worth out of it but it's not something that you've decided to say, oh yeah, I can just ditch this after one wear because it's no big deal. You're still creating that bulk, that foundation look, and still having room to play as you see fit for different trends and different seasons. But everything you use, you're still going to get the most, the, the cost to wear ratio is still gonna be great and it's going to last long. So you're not contributing to clothes and landfills and the waste, you know, excess waste of resources and depletion of non-renewable resources. Okay. So yeah, that's my case. I pleaded my case for fast fashion. Let me know in the comments below. Did I, did I still not make my case? Do you, do you think I'm whack and just, you know, still completely off? What did I miss? What do you think? What do you see that I don't? That's what I have for you today. Um, uh, please, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. I post new videos every Wednesday. Uh, if you want to work with me personally, as I am a personal stylist also, I will leave my information in the box below, or you can send me a direct message on Instagram. I am at the stylish millennial. So that's all I have for you today, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.